we are going to be sharing or talking about five alternatives to ChatGPT. Because as you know, ChatGPT has been everywhere in the media and online. And honestly, I think it's a great tool for various cases, but there are many tools out there for coding, productivity, and different use cases that are so much better than ChatGPT. Today's video, we're going to focus on tools around coding and productivity, most of them that can be used for either. So we're not going to cover very common tools such as Tab9 or Copilot, ones that we're all familiar with. I'm gonna try and find some ones or some tools that are very different or uh, that you might have not heard about that you can implement in your daily life, whether you're coding, being more productive, wanting this tool to do varying things for you that you can use. All right, let's jump into it. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go. I, I don't know where we're going. I'm, I'm sitting down here. <laughs> Okay, have you heard of autonomous AI? I recently came across this and am blown away by this technology. It no longer needs you to put in a prompt. The, the AI can learn from past prompts and tasks and continue iterating. This is wild. Let me talk more about it. Before we get into exactly what Agent GPT is, I wanted to take a step back though because Agent GPT is one of the first of its kind. We've been hearing a lot, or maybe you are just starting to hear about it now, about autonomous AI, which is essentially being able to train your own AI chatbot with its data. So it will continue to learn from its own data, getting smarter and smarter. It's really wild. Like it kind of puts ChatGPT to shame, in my opinion, as to what it can do. Okay, I have some notes on it here because this is something I'm still learning about. So AutoGPT is a tool that lets you achieve your goals by allowing LLMs to think, plan, and execute actions autonomously. So what this means is unlike ChatGPT where you need to input your question or your prompt, you do not need to do that with autonomous AI. It will continue to think and take decisions rationally on its own. It's really the next step in AI. And up until Agent GPT, if you wanted to play around with autonomous AI, you needed to code to do so, which there are tons of different tutorials out there and it's a really great exercise Maybe we should make a video doing that actually. Leave in the comments if you're interested in that. But you needed to do it locally on your machine and have some knowledge of code. Now with Agent GPT, if you are a coder or you are a non-technical person, you can play around and have access to autonomous AI. So let's pull it up on screen here. Okay, as you can see on screen here, I have Agent GPT pulled up and uh, let's start by giving this a name. Can you see the door move behind me? Mr. Muggs. Hi, Mr. Muggs. Hi, mommy. It's like a ghost. Anyways, Agent GPT, let's give this a name. Let's call this Code GPT because we want it to help us with code. This could be Productivity GPT, whatever you wanted to name it. And the goal is, let's say, uh, let's make the goal to build websites fast. I don't know if that's the greatest goal for this, but let's try it agent so it's in thinking it's thinking meaning it's going through its data looking and adding some tasks here develop a website builder implement an automatic okay it's, let's just let it live its life for a second here all right develop a website builder implement an automatic content generation feature utilize the code generation tools integrate a responsive design framework like these are the steps that it is going to start doing which is incredible integrated content management system. I mean, it's brilliant. It's taking the steps to how would I build a website fast? And uh, well, we're sorry for this demo. We cannot have our agents running for too long. So of course you need to sign in, but this is incredible. So you're essentially giving it a goal and letting it take on these tasks to complete them. So if we were to sign in and go through this process even further, it would start executing as you can see here and continue through this entire process. So this has been used, I've seen cases of it being used for uh, people who wanted to manage their entire social media channels, people who wanted to build them websites or apps, manage their calendar. It will literally take on the tasks for you. It's really incredible and kind of terrifying at the same time. Once again, this is Agent GPT, but you can also make your own autonomous AI through uh, the code. A lot of times there is examples with Python, which is really interesting, but this is a great way to have a platform to tinker around with. Next on the list is more for you app developers out there or anyone who is really interested, even from a business perspective, of coming up with really interesting ideas uh, for technology. So maybe you want to build the app, maybe you just want to understand uh, or have some ideas around apps or technologies to build. 
you need to check out Aura.sh. Okay, I have up on screen here, Aura SH, and this is really cool. It allows you to build essentially AI apps in seconds. And let's keep in mind, this is some marketing material in seconds, but it does happen very quickly that you can use existing prompts and build a smart contract or build a web application, whatever you are looking for, you can get, th get that code in seconds. And they say on the website, they use GPT-4. I have heard mixed reviews that it's a GPT-3 that they structured to appear as GPT-4 in their responses. But regardless, it's still a very interesting tool to play around with. Meet Cody is a newer one that I've found and I've been really tinkering around with it. Let me show you more. Okay, so I found Meet Cody a while ago and I've just been using it for tinkering. I haven't actually used it for business purposes, which is its whole, its whole spiel or its whole main thing. But I just wanted to see if it could help manage some aspects of my business. And it's very interesting here on screen. So what it allows you to do is instant answer to your business questions. It understands your business over time as you are continuing to feed it data about it. You can upload any documents, whether it be Google, Notion, etc., and continue to build upon its knowledge about your business. And then also too, what I like is it's essentially, they, they refer to it as an assistant like ChatGPT with the benefit of being able to train on your business, your team, processes, and clients. So also too, the fact that it can train with your processes and clients is another big win for me. This is a tool I think that, so I'll put up on screen here some prompts that it's really good at. I love this one where it's explain what we do like I'm five, which honestly, Sometimes, especially if you're working for a technical company, having a clear way to explain what your company does, even if you built the company, is sometimes really difficult. And this is just a really fun way to do it. But once again, it can be human resources, marketing, IT, procedures, and it really understands your company. So this is an AI that you can utilize to, what is the word? It's so much more custom than say ChatGPT or any of these other AI systems out there. I really like it so far, and uh, it definitely will help boost your productivity by being able to understand your business. The way the script is written for this video, script, I don't really do scripts, but I mean script meaning like bullet points of information is always on this tool that I'm about to talk about. It's pretty much been, it's not a free tool, but it's pretty affordable and it's something that in my opinion is the number one AI tool uh, that I use today that is worth actually paying for. I feel like I've re-emphasized this so many times, but I use Jasper on the daily, like way more than ChatGPT even actually. And I use it mainly for helping me with uh, script writing, with blog posts, when I'm writing blog, like technical blog posts for work, when I'm writing scripts for YouTube. It, and it, what I do is I give it my current script. So it's not as though I get ideas from it, but I will feed it my ideas, my scripts, and then in turn what it will do is it will reword it for me in the tone I would like. So you can choose tone of voice, uh, keywords you wanna add, different things like that. I also use it a lot when I'm writing emails. I hate writing emails, I am terrible at it. And it's a great way to, for that what I'll do is I'll write like a super terrible like mind dump of an email, like this is kind of what I wanna say and get it to reword it for me like a tech professional, like a software developer, however I want it to sound based on who I'm speaking to. And I'll kind of I'll always alter what it gives me, but it just gives me a good guided path for next steps. So Jasper is, it's not free. I don't know if they have a free version. Uh, I don't think so. But honestly, it's something that after exploring it for months now, I think it's totally worth it for my personal use. Um, being able to utilize its templates from ads, blogs, business, e-commerce, SEO, social media. It just has so many different uh, areas that you can really dive into. So Jasper probably, I don't wanna pick a favorite. I feel like a mom who has to pick a favorite, but if I did, it's probably my favorite tool uh, that I'm using right now with AI. This tool is so hard to talk about because it has such a weird name. It's called literally anything. No, it, like that's the name, literally anything. This, as I mentioned, is an app that I recently stumbled across and it's pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, it's just, it is what the name says, which is literally anything. And right now it's for desktop only, but for example, you can input, let's pull it up here. You can input, for example, uh, let's use one of these examples, personalized budget tracker with spending analysis. So you build, and it does take, depending on how many people are using it at the time, it can take a few minutes uh, to, to fully build. Not even a few minutes, but it feels like that in today's world when it's a few seconds. And it will literally build out your, entire application. So you can use this to create UI, to create apps, uh, to create photo carousels, to create a 
trip planner, whatever you want. And this is similar to ChatGPT, but I do find the UI and the experience on literally anything to be much more, to be much more better, to be honest. Like I just really enjoy using the platform more. I'm someone who uses desktop a lot. I, I don't really do work on my phone from a browser, for example. So I just find that the fact that they only have it on desktop doesn't really affect me, but it definitely is something that you can use for both the code aspect, whether you want to help it build out your UI. So say you're more, you're not necessarily a great UI designer, but you want to build out a front end application. I would use something like literally anything sounds so weird, literally anything.io to help you build uh, the UI and then take that and then build with it. So it's pretty cool. It's AI nowadays, it feels like almost, it's kind of like your assistant or your friend that for the areas that you don't want to do or you're not good at, and you don't want to become better at, you can get AI to do it for you. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to get AI to help you with all this. When you think nowadays when the first digital camera came out or uh, well, let's stick with that example. It's not like at the time people were like, or maybe they were like, oh, this is going to completely take out photographers, all their jobs are going to be gone. We have been continuing to evolve with technology and the roles that technology is helping us with we continue to evolve uh, as well with. So it's not something that's going to take over all of our jobs, or if it gets to a point where it does take over all of our jobs, it's not just in tech, it's at that point, it will be all of our jobs taken over, but I really don't think that will happen. In turn, what I believe is we will have more room and space, like we always have, to continue to build interesting things and continue to build new ideas, creativity. It's gonna allow for more time for us to focus on the bigger picture things. So it's doing some really interesting things and these are just five tools that I'm obsessed with from a coding productivity standpoint, but they can be used really for so many different use cases. Uh, I just wanted to hone in on those two that I'm really passionate about. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave down in the comments if you have tried any of these tools, if I missed one that you're like, Tiff, this is an obvious one you missed. And um, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career-related videos. I'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone.